This video is sponsored by Rit Dye. More on that later in the video. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. I will be teaching you how to make a crochet skull balaclava, perfect for Halloween, but be safe when wearing stuff like this. So there's only really two parts to it. There's the skull and then there's the actual balaclava part. This video is a special video because it is sponsored by Rit Dye and I am going to show you how to do gradients. Look at this beautiful gradient. Oh, it's so rich and gorgeous. And I did this with Rit Dye. And I'm so excited because, you know, I love dyeing my own yarn. I love dyeing gradients. Gradients, oh, I just eat them up. I love them so much. Like, look how beautiful that is. Look at that gradient. Wow, gorgeous. It's even more bright in real life. It makes me so happy. But later on in the video, I'll show you how to do this yourself, which is so exciting. But also if you want to do like bunny ears, cat ears, any ears you want, I also have another tutorial. Sorry to force you to click onto another video, but it's already out there. It's part two to like my bunny cat bear hood, balaclava hood thing. If you want cat ears, bear ears, you can add that on, which is great. Perfect. I put bunny ears on this one, but this one has no ears, um, which is also great. So about like last year, I want to say maybe August of 2022, I made one with like long ears and they had skeletons on the ears and I wanted to make a version that was like beginner friendly. Keep in mind, there is some hand sewing, but that is all right. You know, you live and you learn. It's not a lot of hand sewing. I would say definitely one of the easier tutorials I've done. But if you're brand new to crochet, definitely get confident with crochet a little more and then maybe try to tackle this. In the past, I've asked people like, hey, maybe don't sell the things you make with my tutorials. Um, I don't really care anymore. <laughs> I've stopped caring. <laughs> so if you wanna sell like products made with my tutorials, that's fine. Just properly credit me. So if you're gonna sell something, put in the description, hey, this was made with Alexandria Massey's so-and-so tutorial. It's just that if somebody else sees that and it's like, I wanna make it, I want people to be able to find that, you know? Accessibility, no gatekeeping. We're all for learning and teaching here. So this is what, what just the skull looks like. It's actually like pretty fun, you know, a lot of possibilities with this costume and it's easy to take on and off. This one is my absolute favorite because look how fun and cool that gradient is. Ah, it was so cute. Okay, the gradient is so good. I am just so delicious. I love candy corn. I know like, okay, I find either people love candy corn or they hate candy corn. I'm on the I love candy corn side. Let me know in the comments if you like candy corn or you don't like candy corn, but that is the color inspiration for this. You know, go figure. I don't think I have anything else I want to say other than thank you Rit Dye for sponsoring this video. And I'll talk more about the dyes when I get to the actual part in the video where I use the dyes. So keep watching until then if you want to learn a little bit about dyeing. And if you want me to do more dyeing videos in the future, let me know. I'd love to teach you guys and I'd love to share the knowledge of wealth and knowing things about textiles. Um, so I think that's all I have to say. My hair's all messed up. Oh no. <laughs> Um, I hope you have a fun and safe Halloween. If you do this, snap a picture, send me an email, tag me. I would absolutely love to see the things you make. It makes me so happy when people follow my tutorials. Oh, warms my heart. Anyways, okay, let's just get on with the tutorial. Thank you so much. See you guys. I forgot to mention this earlier, but there's a written version on my website that is for purchase. So like with all my tutorials, I have like the YouTube version for free where I like show you in a video tutorial, but I always have a written pattern on my website for purchase. And I'm pricing this one a lot cheaper than my other ones because it only requires like two pieces. Um, but if you like diagrams and photo instructions and written instructions, that is available. I'm just letting you guys know. This is no way me saying, oh my God, buy my pattern, blah, blah, blah. I also want to say thank you to anyone who's purchased a pattern from me. This allows me to essentially do more videos like this, which is awesome and exciting. Supporting me helps me make more things for you guys. Anyways, on to the tutorial. Hi everyone, before we get started, I wanted to talk about like yarn thickness and stuff like that. So I'm going to measure it right here. I would consider it about three double crochets per inch. And yeah, like if it fits, it fits. This isn't like a super strict guide where it's like, you need to do it this way or that way. No, like, you know, try it on, see how it feels. It's all up to your comfort. Everything is totally up to you. And that is how I kind of make things. Now let's talk about my yarn. I use 100% Canadian wool and this is the Wonder Woolen from Fleece Artist. It's super soft. I've talked about it before. And I just like, I really love this wool because it's just really nice. I love to support local or somewhere I was local to previously, but um, it's great to dye. It's my favorite. I would consider this like a medium weight, honestly. Um, 
maybe a bit thicker than a medium weight but then again like everyone has different like opinions for things but so i like to use a four millimeter crochet hook and you would i would like that's pretty small of a crochet hook for the thickness of yarn i'm using but i like my things to be dense just putting that out there if you'd like yours to be less denser totally up to you oh yeah also this is like not a tutorial on how to teach you how to crochet if you don't know how to crochet this is not the video for you you need to know how to crochet to follow the instructions um yeah i think that's that's all i got we're gonna do the balaclava portion and this is a finished one that hasn't been blocked yet and i'm just gonna show you and you may think hey the eye holes are kind of small but I prefer to make mine on like the smaller side so I'm able to organically like stretch it out and block it to that shape. And that is because I work with wool and wool kind of takes the shape that you tell it to be in once you felt it. If you're not working with wool, you can always, you know, skip that stitch right there and the one right there to make it larger. Totally up to you. If you want big eye holes, you want no eye holes, <laughs> maybe you can always do that. Um, this is just like, this is just a nice base basic basic pattern for you to pull over your head something that's easy now to start this one i'm gonna get my yarn i'm gonna do a slip knot and you can either do a magic circle but i'm kind of a magic circle hater don't ask why i don't want to get into it um but i prefer to chain three and then slip stitch into that top chain to form a loop and then i'm gonna crochet into that little loop i created we're going to chain three and then we are going to double crochet into that little loop we created. And I am going to double crochet into there. Once I have my 12, I am going to slip stitch into that first stitch we've made. So right there, um, and the, the chain three is here. I'm going to skip over that, go into that one, and I'm going to slip stitch there, and then I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to double crochet two into each stitch but I'm going to count like the thing we just chained out of as a stitch and I'm going to skip the one back here. You know what I mean? I'm going to do two double crochets into each stitch, so that's 24 stitches total. All right, now we've gone around the whole circle and I'm going to do a slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet from that row. And look, beautiful and seamless. Now onto row three, we're going to chain three. And then we're going to double crochet into that first kind of stitch area, and then I'm going to increase in the next one. And then I'm going to repeat that around the whole circle. So that's one double crochet, increase, one double crochet, increase. We're finished our third row, and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet. Then I'm going to chain three. Now, for the fourth row, I'm going to do two double crochets increase. So I'm going to put that first one right there. One, two, increase. And I'm going to repeat that around the whole circle. So double crochet, double crochet, increase. So I'm at the end of the fourth row and I'm going to put my hook into the first double crochet. And I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to chain three. And for the fifth row, we're going to double crochet three, increase. So double crochet one, two, three, then increase in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. Now we're done with row five. And then we're going to place our hook into that first double crochet slip stitch. And for the next bunch of rows, we're no longer doing increases. So we're done with the increases and we're just going to double crochet around. It's 60 stitches. And for the next bunch of rows, so rows six till rows nine. So the next four rows, we're only going to do just straight double crochet rows. So I finished row nine. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those nine rows. And for the 10th row, it's going to be a bit different, and then we're going to go back to just boring double crochets, but that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to chain three, and then I'm going to double crochet 24. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
And then we're going to skip six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then in the next one, we're going to double crochet three. So there we go. One, two, three. Oh no. There we go. And as you can see, that is the first eyeball. And then we're going to repeat that again. We're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to skip the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And in the next one, double crochet. And then I'm going to continue double crocheting all the way around. And I think that's 21 stitches. Now that I've finished this row, I'm just going to slip stitch into that first double crochet, and then I'm going to continue just crocheting around, no increases, and I'm going to treat each chain as a stitch, so I'm just going to double crochet six times in there, if that makes sense. And I'm going to continue that for a bunch of more rows, so rows 11 to 21 are just going to be plain double crochet rows, no increases, just that boring stuff. As you can see, I'm all finished. I did all of those rows. Now you're welcome to make it longer if you want like more stuff around the neck, I guess is what I'm saying, but I think this fits me well. Again, no like rules to this. Do whatever you like. And you may be wondering, okay, why did you do it in a light color when it's in black? Well, sometimes I like dyeing things afterwards. Also, it's easy for you to see it in white on camera. I find it's a little difficult to see on black, so I'm just gonna dye this after but I'm also gonna dye something special. It is time to make the skull. And for the skull, I'm just using single crochets, chains, and a quad triple crochet, and I'll show you how to do that. But, you know, there's a lot of instructions kind of figuring it out. It looks a little complicated, but I promise if you follow along, you'll be okay. So I'm gonna start with my yarn. I'm gonna start with a slip knot. And I'm going to chain 30. Alright, once I have 30, I'm going to make sure you don't twist it. I'm going to put my hook in that first chain, and I'm gonna do a slip stitch right there, and I've got my loop. Then I'm going to chain another 30. Once I have that chain of 30, I'm going to make sure I don't twist it again, and then I'm going to do a slip stitch into that first chain that we did, like that. After that, we're going to single crochet 60 all around the edge, so right around the little figure eight we've made. And when I'm doing that, I like to do that around my ends so I don't have to weave in my ends later, but totally up to you. As you can see, we finished going around the first eyeball. Now we're going to continue doing it for the second eyeball. As you can see, I've gone all the way around and I'm just going to put my hook into that first stitch and do a slip knot or slip stitch and then snip my end. And then I'm going to weave in my end. Here we go. It's kind of curling. Alright, so the next step is that we're going to take our yarn, we're going to do a slip stitch, and I'm just going to work from this side. And this is right where the center is, like right between these two stitches. And then I'm going to count 12 stitches out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch and put my slip knot around my hook and then I'm going to pull through and chain one just to get that started. Then I'm going to start single crocheting, but I'm going to place that first single crochet into the stitch where we like added our hook and slip stitch. So that's going to be our first one. So one. We're going to do 24, by the way, so 1, 2, 3. Alright, so that is what our first row looks like. And let me see if I can kind of get a better 
angle like that, maybe. I don't know if this is helping. <laughs> um, so yeah, then we're just going to basically build it back and forth to create like this forehead area, and obviously these are the eyeballs. Yeah. So that's row one. Okay, for row two, I flipped it around obviously, and I'm not gonna chain one, and I'm not gonna crochet in that first stitch. I'm going to skip that first stitch, and I'm gonna go right into that second stitch, and that is where I'm gonna start crocheting. And I'm going to single crochet 22. As you can see, it's a bit tough to see, but that is the last stitch, and no, 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 we're not crocheting in that last stitch. <laughs> Instead, we're going to flip it over and we're going to start row three. And same thing with the last row. We're not going to chain. We're not going to place any single crochets into that first stitch. We're skipping right over that and going right into the second stitch. And that is where we are going to single crochet 20 across. Here we are, same as the last row. We're not putting a single crochet into there. Just did 20 across. Now I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to... Again, skip that first one, go right into the second one. I'm going to single crochet 18. And again, not putting one in that last one. We're going to flip it over. And for row 5, we're going to, again, skip that first stitch, go right into the second one. We're going to single crochet 16. For row 6, again, flipping it over, skipping that first stitch, going to the second one, going into that second stitch, we're going to single crochet 14. Now for our final forehead row, we're going to flip it over, again, continue the same thing, skip the first stitch, go into that second stitch, we're going to single crochet 12. Now here we are, and as you can see, this is kind of bumpy, it's not nice, but don't worry, it won't look like that in the final thing. I snip my yarn, and then weave in my end now. Wonderful! Great, got the top portion done. Now, for the bottom portion, we're going to, again, kind of find the center. Looks like right there is, that's the center. I don't even think that's a stitch. Um, then I'm going to count 15 stitches out from my hook. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Place my hook in there. Slip knot. I'm going to pull my yarn through. Chain one. And just like the last time we did this, I'm going to count this little thing as my first stitch. So I'm going to place my first single crochet into right there. And then I'm going to single crochet 12. So that's one. All right, and as you can see, this is where like the nose area is gonna be put. Then I'm going to chain two. And then I'm gonna count the next six stitches. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm gonna place my next, my hook into that stitch after that. So I'm gonna skip six stitches. There we go. And then I'm going to single crochet 12. And look at that! We got a little nose, or lack of nose. I don't <laughs> know what to refer to it as. And then for row two, I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to skip that very first stitch and put my hook into the second stitch there, and I'm going to single crochet 24. I'm sure by now you're used to me skipping that last stitch. Then we're going to turn it around. And for row three, again, skipping that first one, going into that second one, we're going to single crochet 22. Here we are, again, skipping that last stitch. And I'm just laying it out so you can kind of visualize this better, but I'm going to end up flipping it down in a sec. But next we're going to do the teeth, and this is what they're going to look like. So I'm going to flip it over this way. Then I'm going to skip that first stitch, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the next four stitches. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. 
Um, and then I'm going to quad triple crochet. And you know, for a double crochet, you yarn over once. For triple crochet, you yarn over twice. For quad crochet, we're going to yarn over three times. So there's three loops on our hook. I'm going to skip that first stitch and place it into that second stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, pull through. <laughs> pull through, pull through, and that is how we get a quad triple crochet. And it's literally just like a double crochet but longer, or a triple crochet but longer. So I'm going to do that again, but first I'm going to chain one, one, two, three, skip the next stitch, place it into the next one after that, then oh, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yeah, I'll do that again. We're going to chain one, Yarn over three times, skip that stitch, pull through, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And as you can see, it's kind of forming like the teeth is what I'm going to call it. Um, we're going to do this a total of six times. So we have three. Let's do it three more times. So I'm going to chain one, three loops on the hook. <laughs> And then I'm going to skip that next stitch, go into the one after that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Um, there's a lot of tutorials out there, but if you're familiar with the double crochet or triple crochet, I'm sure this is good. Wrap it around three times, I'm going to skip that stitch and go into the next one. Looking quite beautiful. This is our last one we're doing. There we go. And there is our like, these are the teeth. And so much easier than you anticipated, right? For row five, I'm gonna kind of flip it over. I'm not going to chain. I'm just gonna skip that first stitch and place it into that second stitch. I'm going to single crochet 12. Sorry, I don't know why I said 12. You actually just single crochet 11 because um, we're just, yeah, we're just going to single crochet 11 because there's, um, that this makes it like an odd number of teeth. Sorry about that. So I'm going to flip it over and then we're going to do like our sixth row, I guess is what I would call it. I'm going to skip the first stitch, go into the second stitch. I'm going to single crochet 10. And as you might see, like, oh, why'd you go in the last stitch when you haven't been this whole time? Well, we're actually going to crochet around the entire edge. We're just going to go right around. And there is no method to this madness. You're just going to find stitches that seem appropriate and then just kind of place it there. Like, I'm going to put one right there. Um, and you're just going to crochet around the whole edge and you're going to stop right here. So as you can see, it's a little wrinkly, but that's okay. We'll fix this when we block it. As you can see, there is my very first stitch. I didn't bother going over that again. I'm just going to connect it there. I'm going to do a slip stitch, and I'm going to chop off my yarn there and weave in my ends. And there we go! We're all done the skull. Did not take that long, surprisingly. Uh, don't worry too much about this area. You can always go over it with some yarn. Uh, so I'm just taking yarn needle and just like, I'm just going to go back and forth a couple of times. If you want it to feel extra secure, look at that. All fixed. Look how incredibly perfect that is, and that's all fine too. And you may think like, oh, maybe the eye holes are a bit small, but don't worry, I like to block mine. I'll like get it all soapy, wash it, and then I like to block mine into the shape I want it to be, because this is just like, it's a little wrinkly, it's not perfect. And that's all right, we're gonna make it perfect. All right, so now we've gotten to the dyeing portion. As you can see, there's my hot plate, and there's my pot of water, and I'm just heating it up and letting it get real warm. And I'm just going to soak my balaclava and the ears. Those are the only two things that I'm dying. There's my water, nice and warm. And I'm just pouring in some vinegar, as said on the writ dye instructions. And the first color I'm doing is golden yellow. Shake it up real nice. I'm just adding a little bit because that's what I think it needs. And I'm 
putting the soaking fabric into there and I'm just gonna stir it and you know let it soak up the dye and after I took it out like look how nice that color is wow gorgeous gorgeous and as you can see I'm like squeezing out all the rest of the dye next I'm adding some tangerine and you can see I added a bit of golden yellow and a bit of tangerine so um, I'm just using like little amounts. You can always add more, which is the great thing about adding a little amount. So right now I'm gathering the top of the balaclava as well as the top of the ears and I'm going to hold them all at the top and I'm just going to start dipping. So I sped it up two times because it's insufferably long, but right now this is what it looks like in real time. You got to be really patient. You're just dipping it and I'm going to speed it up again, but <laughs> it's just like use your judgment. I'm dipping it about, I want to say like two thirds of a way in just above the eyeballs and I think that's perfect for me. And I'm just adding a bit more tangerine because I think it needs to be a little bit more tangerine. And as you can see, I'm only dipping it about halfway, about under the eyes at this point. That is how you create a gradient. And as you can see, I'm just dipping around the same area, you know, keep doing it as much as I want until I think it's the appropriate color. I'm taking it out and now I'm adding a bit of scarlet red. And it was just a tiny bit, not a lot, but just enough. And I'm squeezing out the excess water in the balaclava and then I'm just dipping it again. But this time, as you can see, I'm only dipping like the very bottom. Um, and as you can see, I go in a bit deeper sometimes, but in general, I'm sticking to the very bottom of the balaclava and that's how you get that gradient. Just a lot of patience, a lot of dipping and, you know, looking, keeping an eye on how well the fabric is taking the dye. And as you can see, it's turning out pretty well which is awesome. The next step after that is just rinsing it out. I'm just trying to get all of the excess dye out so I'm able to do the next step. And I have another pot of water on the stove and this time we are using some Rit Colorstay dye fixative. I've never used this before, this is my first time. And I just added a bit to the pot and I'm putting my balaclavas in and the color dye fixative is supposed to keep the color in and to keep it bright, which is exactly what I need and want, and to prevent it from like bleeding into each other, which I think is perfect for this project. Oh, this is so embarrassing. But I set up my tripod to like film myself washing this, but I only got an image of the back of my arm. So wash it a bunch of times. You gotta make sure you wash it because it, okay, you gotta make sure you wash it a bunch of times because this is a garment you're wearing on your face and you wanna make sure the water runs clear, you're using lots of soap, do like several washes, you know? Next step is to pin everything and um so i'm just i brought everything outside and this is like a really old yoga mat that i cleaned and i use as like my blocking board now and blocking is essentially just like stretching your piece of fabric out or laying it out and pinning it down and the reason we do this is so it dries to that shape and as you can see i'm pinning the ears next to the interior ears on the left they're about the same size and i'm using a styrofoam head to pin the balaclava to it because like you know it's going to be worn on the face and i want it to kind of take the shape of the face that's optional you can always skip like the styrofoam head but i just prefer to use it because i think it just like shapes everything a little bit better and as you can see i'm just adding pins to places on the face that i think is necessary and the most important part was the eyes obviously and as you can see i pinned the skull faces as well and you know i just laid it out flat and i pinned it nothing more interesting than that now it is time to sew and here is the balaclava look how amazing that gradient is i'm so happy with it there is the skull and as you can see i'm just gonna put the skull like over the balaclava and that is how we're gonna sew it on and you see like once it goes onto the styrofoam head it kind of stretches to like how you're gonna be wearing it on your actual face so i just place that onto the head and i'm just pinning it down and the way I'm pinning it is I'm just making sure that that balaclava peeks through through the eyes a bit. You know, there's a little border and the skull eyes are obviously like larger holes. So they fit around perfectly, if that makes sense. So I have like the perfect little orange circle you can see through like the bone of the skull eyes, if that makes sense. And I'm just pinning all around the whole thing because I want it to stay in place as I sew it. And you know, as I sew it, I'm taking pins out. After everything is pinned, I'm just going to sew around the whole skull head. I'm just doing like the perimeter. That's the very first thing I wanna do. I think like that's the best place to start because you know, you gotta keep everything in place. Um, and then after that, I sew the I sew the inside of the eyes and I'm just going right around the eyes. But as you can see, we're gonna do the nose next and I'm just sewing around the nose, just sewing everything down. And then now we're going to do the mouth. I don't sew each individual like tooth together or tooth onto the balaclava. You can do that if you want. The teeth are kind of loose, which is okay with me. I just sew around like the perimeter of the mouth. All right, wow, you made it to the end of this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and tuning in. If you made this, 
send me an email tag me instagram i don't know emails i respond the most so maybe try that if you tried dying something let me know how that went you know um it took me it took me a long time to be confident with dying things dying is very difficult um pun not intended is it a pun i don't know anyways um thank you so much for watching if you have any questions let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos let me know um i think that's all i have to say thank you so so much for watching i appreciate it so much my heart is so full i would love to give everyone a hug who has subscribed and watched my videos it makes me so happy and i'm so happy to share the knowledge in the wealth of the textile universe that i've gained and i'm going to pass on I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.